Okay, you can go ahead, Liz. So tonight we have um, okay. we have Liz, and she's going to be presenting for us mm -hmm. in, uh, on code combat. Yeah. Just, All right. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time today. Um, so I'm Liz. I'm uh, from Code Combat. I'm going to walk you through uh, our program today. Um, but just kind of give you some context. Um, Adam Swift had uh, actually used Code Combat through Code.org, some of the activities on Code.org with some students, <clears throat> and thought uh, that you all might be interested in learning a little bit more about our program. Um, how many of you have heard of Code Combat before? I think we've all heard of it, but I don't know that um, we've all seen it. OK, great. Um, so yeah, we have some activities on code.org, but of course you can just go to codecombat.com and create a teacher account and have your students play. Um, so we'll be walking through that. Um, and then can you all, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of telling me um, you know, what you're doing around computer science now, or are you, uh, what t kind of coding are you teaching? Uh, what kind of classes are you offering? Just a little bit about yourselves. Okay. Um, I can start. Or Rama sure. Can start. sure. Hi, uh, my name is Rama. I am a computer science enthusiast, and I also teach uh, programming languages online. So I okay. have experience teaching uh, Python and Java. Okay. Yeah. Great. Michelle. I'm Michelle, and I'm here at the SRN ETTC, so I push into classrooms all over South Jersey, and okay. I work with multiple grade levels, integrating technology and programming is one of the awesome. things that I'm trying to get teachers more comfortable with. Okay. So I'll push into the classroom and team teach. Um, I've not used code combat with any of the classes yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing like how, um, how it can be implemented. And, uh, to see it. Cool. Um, Barb Haggerty, so I'm with, hi, um, I'm with SRI and as well. Uh, I work, I support uh, the work that Michelle and Phil do, and then I also do programming here. Um, previously, I was K-12 uh, tech director, so I did, I worked with computer science and STEM framework for the district I was in, uh, and providing resources that way. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Deepa McCabe. I teach grades 6 to 8 computer science in Hamilton Township. My 8th grade class is my most in-depth class because I see those kids 150 times in the school year, where my 5th and 7th graders now only see 30 times in the whole school year. Okay. So my 8th graders, we're currently using the, um, this is my first year in the position and there's not really a defined curriculum and my administrators don't really understand computer science, so it's kind of like, just teach what you want to teach. Kind of. Yeah. So we're using um, code.org. Currently, we're doing code.org's um, game lab. They're making they're making an interactive card right now, but the next chapter will make their games. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty common. That's typically what we hear is uh, you know introducing computer science, first time teacher, just. Find some curriculum and and do what you can. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> Pretty common. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Jeff. Uh, I teach kindergarten through third grade, and uh, I teach computer literacy and also computer science. And uh, I see the kids once a week for forty minutes, so my time is very limited. I like to try to keep most of it. Um, when it comes to coding, we mostly use Scratch um, mm -hmm. programming, but I'm looking for something that will help bridge the gap between visual programming and, and tech. Okay, great. So I'm more advanced. Okay, and I'm Carson Grant. I am a supervisor currently of technology for an Atlantic High School District at Harvey Township, and Previously taught technology, taught computer science, and was an instructional coach as well, which mm -hmm. with teachers as well as administrators. So always looking to see what else is out there, working through the teachers that are in the Great. So 
I, I'm Phil. I, um, I, I do PD for uh, K-12 teachers, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of which is, uh, are, are things like this, multiple different coding apps and things like that. Um, basically, it's based on demand. Okay. Great. Um, hi, I'm Jessica, and I work for Eggmar uh, Township, and I work with grade 68 for technology integration with a focus on personal financial literacy. Okay. Not a lot of coding. <laughs> uh, Jason Barr, brand new um, computer science teacher at Mainland, but I, I taught computer science at the middle school level in Colorado for a year. Um, uh -huh. Back to family. So. I'm here to meet other people that can save me from the madness. You teach my son. <laughs> you teach my son. Is your son? Thomas the pain. Okay, cool. You well, also teach yeah. Thomas, son? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you're a teacher. You got a pair. So, uh, there you go. You're a teacher. You're a teacher. You're a teacher. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. Super helpful. Um, so in your experience, um, what are some of the challenges that you've uh, kind of had so far introducing coding in the classroom? It's hard. Kids, that's the one thing I hear from kids over and over again. It's hard. This is hard. Hard, yeah. I always say it's hard because it's new, and everything new is hard. And we'll learn mm -hmm. and it won't be hard anymore. But that's, that's what I true. It's hard. And then okay. you get frustrated and say it's boring. Yeah. I think Anything the, else? Yeah, the teachers that I work with, they, you know, they, they've not had any training at all. Mm -hmm. And um, they find it challenging because there's not somebody and they're supporting them every day. So it's, it's kind of, um, <clears throat> I think if, if they had like sustained coaching, that it would be a little bit better. But, um, but they're, they're afraid to try it without somebody holding their hand. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I think that's one the of the other challenge personal challenges. For me, is I'll introduce it like we're doing code.org. Lesson 14 is due by the end of the day, Friday. I have some kids that are done with lesson 22, but I have some kids that are on lesson 10. Yeah. And so it's really hard to do direct instruction because they're all in different places. And then when so-and-so is stuck when they're on lesson 10 and so-and-so is stuck and they're on lesson 16, I can't be helping them both at the same time. And I do have them partner and things like that, but it's meeting their different, there's such a diverse need in my classroom and meeting all those needs at once mm -hmm. is really a challenge for me. Okay. Yeah, we, we definitely hear that a lot. Okay. Uh, well, if anything else comes up, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to hop into Code Combat here. Feel free to uh, ask me questions if anything kind of comes up along along the way. Um, so, for those of you who might not have heard of Code Combat, it's a game that teaches real coding skills. So, we offer Python and JavaScript and a little bit of HTML. And I'm just actually going to hop right into the game itself. Um, so at any point you can create a teacher account and have your students try out our first unit. Um, I think someone just joined here. Okay. All right. So Code Combat, a little quick background. It started as a game for individuals to learn how to code on their own at home. And uh, it was meant to be engaging because co computer science is typically a, you know, a difficult subject to learn. So we wanted it to be fun and engaging for all types of people to be able to learn. Uh, so that's why it's in our game environment. And uh, we actually found that over time there were kids uh, or teachers using it in the classroom. So we developed a separate classroom version to help support them. So we have 11 courses total. Um, five of them are project-based, and then the six of them are focusing on the, the concepts of learning JavaScript and Python. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just going to jump into the first course here. So this is just the very um, it, basics of learning how to code. I'm going to choose Python, and I'm going to click the level. So we have these characters, these heroes that the students can choose to kind of go through these different worlds with them uh, to accomplish each of the levels or the challenges that the, the students will experience. Okay. So when they first come in here, we have the game piece on the left. We have this pop-up uh, goal section to kind of let the student know what the goals of this particular level are. So here we have to avoid the spikes, collect the gem. So we have to get the hero from the upper left-hand corner over, down, over to get to the gem. Okay, I'm just going to turn off the sound. Okay, great. Um, so we have these little pop-ups kind of guiding the student. In, on the right, we have the code editor itself, and then we have the methods that we can use to move the hero. So like I said, we need to move to the right, down, and to the right again. We have some starter code here. So this kind of gets the student uh, to see that writing hero.move right moves the hero one spot to the right. And so now we can, do you have any questions? No. Okay, um, so I can choose to so write down or hero. Either way, we have autocomplete. So that gets the student familiar with the Python language, but it also uh, is real world applicable, applicable uh, as that's how you know engineers will type their code so quickly. They'll have these um, presets in here. So I want to select move down. And as I get more and more comfortable, I actually might end up typing the code out on my own. And if I do, as a student, I get immediate feedback. So, um, so here we have a capitalization error. It says hero.move right, but I didn't capitalize that R. So to you and I, hero.move right might mean move the hero to the right. But to the computer, it needs to be in that specific uh, language in order to, for the computer to understand that command. So we have to go in and fix that. OK. So we've completed this level. Now we can go in and move to the next level. This is all about basic syntax. And as we go along, we'll introduce loops and um, variables, et cetera. Uh, but we're just starting out very basic here. Now, if at any point I got stuck and I wasn't sure uh, how to move forward, I could always reference the hints here. So if I click that, I can read through the hints to help guide me through completing this particular level without giving me the answer. So what's great about Code Combat is that it provides the automated feedback that the students need. We have hints in here, we have pop-ups, and we also have practice levels. So there's a lot of support for the students as they're going through Code Combat, you know, knowing that teachers can't be everywhere at once. Um, so that's very helpful. Any questions on that first level there? Um, my question is, is there somewhere where you're actually, um, is there somewhere where you're stopping and having a discussion? Yeah, so uh, I'll go in. For the teacher. Yeah, so I'll go into that in just a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show a couple levels first, and then we'll show you the lesson plans and everything that comes along with it. Wonderful. So for this first unit here, you can see there's a lot of levels in here, and that there's some A and B levels. So those are the practice levels that I mentioned. So not every student will be given a practice level. It's just for those students that need that additional help learning that particular concept. Um, so you'll see some students go through 19 levels, while others might be going through 26 levels. And so Code Combat is all self-paced, which is nice because everybody's at a, at a different level, right, as, as you mentioned. Um, so it's really nice for the instructor to be able to have allow the students to kind of go at their own pace, but giving them the tools that they need, like practice levels and hints, um, to get that support while they're going through on their own. Okay. And then um, as we go through, so we started that first level learning the concepts, and now we have game development and web development. And those are our project-based courses where students can take what they learned and now create a game or a basic web project. Um, so in game development one, 
We go through some levels to learn some basic game mechanics on how to create a game, and then we can create our own game. So here at this last level, we see the blank kind of space where we can create our game. We have our methods, so we learned these in the previous levels here within Game Development 1. And so I can click on any of these and reference the example code. And then we have some items we can spawn onto our game. So we can start typing out the code on the right, and then it'll end up with a game that looks something like this. So this is a game that a student created at the bottom, they have their own unique URL. They can share it with anyone they want to. And whoever has that URL can then play the game. So I can use the WASD keys on my keyboard. I can use a mouse. And I can start moving the hero. And I can't see the code created because this is a game, right? I'm playing this. But on the back end, the teacher can see the code that was used to create this particular game. And so here's another example of the game. Everyone's will look a little bit different. Any thoughts or questions on, on the games that the students can create or, or the first unit there? All that was part of the first unit. So, um, so that, what I just showed you, the game development, that's the second unit. Okay. And the first unit is very basic, so students go through that pretty quickly. Depending upon age level, they'll go through, it's, it'll be like one to three hours. Um, usually it's about a week long if you're incorporating lesson plans. And then uh, moving after game development, we have web development where we introduce HTML and basic CSS. It's very basic, um, so the students go in, learn um, a little bit of HTML, and are, then are able to create uh, a basic web page here, which is for us, they, we have them create a wanted poster. So the students can come in and, and change the font, the coloring, the spacing, add their own photos and content in here. And so this student really likes, <laughs> excuse me, Lord of the Rings. So they have all these Lord of the Ring characters. Uh, but of course, based on, uh, you know, interests, the students uh, wanted poster will look a little bit different. And then in the later web development course, they can create their own quiz through Quizlet. So then again, you can share it out with whoever you want to, and whoever has access to that quiz can then go in and kind of answer the questions and then get different results. So I'm not sure if I mentioned, but Code Combat is good for grades 4 through 12 because we are text-based. So um, some schools will go a little bit younger, maybe into third grade, um, if the students have experience with block-based coding and are ready for that kind of next step, uh, introducing text-based code. Um, or sometimes in second and third grade, if you're looking at um, using it with gifted and talented students. Um, but typically, it's for grades 4 through 12 just because of the the, um, the typing skills, the reading skills, problem solving skills, etc. So those are pretty introductory, uh, but if I scroll down to the later courses, you can kind of take a look at some of the concepts that the students will be learning. And uh, it gets pretty advanced. Um, you know, we actually don't have a lot of schools actually getting this deep into Code Combat. Um, but if you were to create a teacher account, you'd have access to all of this, and you can play through it and evaluate it on your own to see if it's something that would fit for your classroom. OK. And then uh, I know you had mentioned if there were any resources for teachers. So most of the time when we speak with teachers, they're fairly new to computer science, kind of looking around, looking for something that can truly support them because they're new to it. Um, they, you know, they don't have the curriculum in place. Um, so we provide everything a teacher would need to teach coding. And so that includes lesson plans, some rubrics for the projects, um, how to do pair programming, engineering cycle worksheets or debugging worksheets. Um, so all of that. So we'll click into a lesson plan here. And so these are meant to complement the game. They're broken out by concept. So the first unit teaches basic syntax, loops, and variables. And we have the key terms that the students should be learning. 
And then for that first lesson, we give you all the tools that you'll need. So materials, learning objectives, standards. So the standards we have in here are CSCA standards, um, com Common Core uh, math practice standards, and we do map to, um, I think it's New Jersey, um, either computer science or technology standards, which, whichever one um, you, you have, we map to those. We don't have them listed in the lesson plan, but we can provide a separate Excel spreadsheet that kind of shows that mapping. And then there's discussion questions to have with the students um, and everything you would need to deliver that lesson. And then the same thing goes on for lesson number two, which would be loops. If you uh, have a teacher account, you can actually go into the resources and review all the lessons that we do have. So that's always helpful. Um, some other things we have here would be the pacing guides just to kind of show you, um, let's say you're going to use code combat all year in a computer science class. Well, this is the recommended order to assign the courses and approximately how long each course will take. And then we have things like syntax guides. This is great to share with the students as they're going through code combat so they can reference what a function is, what an argument is, uh, if they just forget any of that. It's always nice to kind of have. Okay. Um, okay, great. And then I just wanted to move into the <coughs> teacher dashboard. But be before we do that, um, any thoughts so far? What were the two languages? I know it's Python-based and... Python and JavaScript. Okay. And then we do have two web development courses where you're introducing HTML and CSS. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, as a teacher, can you prevent your students from going farther than you would like them to? Can you restrict their access? Yeah. Yes, so it's at the course level, it's not the individual level, but you can see here that some students were given CS1, others have are all the way up to CS2. So you can say, you can, well, we always recommend not assigning the next course until students have finished the previous course um, <clears throat> because students will tend to jump around. But yeah, you can stop the students course by course and then release those as you, as you, um, wish. Is there a grading mechanism? So there's no uh, grading, but what we do, most teachers will grade by completion. And then also we provide a rubric for the game development units so that you can um, provide grades for their, their, their projects, their games that they create. And uh, do teachers get the complete solution sets for all the challenges? Yeah, so there's two ways you can look at those. Um, so under the course guides here for each course, you'll see the um, level overviews and solutions. So that's one way to look at it. So you'll have the level overview and then the solution. Um, and then the other way would be to actually look at an individual student Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Course progress, sorry. If you click on an um, individual student's progress, you can actually see the code that they wrote versus the solution. So <clears throat> I scroll all the way up to the top, level one here. So this is the first level. This is what the student wrote versus the solution. The solution is the most efficient way to get through that level, but of course there are many answers. Um, for, for every level. So you can see here that the student had hero.move up and then put the two in parentheses. And then actually this was uh, move up, move up. Um, this is the solution. So some of them will look a little bit different. Uh, does the system allow different kinds of solution or does it need to match exactly with the no, yeah, there's there's many ways to complete a level. So if if I were using repeated statements instead of using a for loop, 
would it still clear it or would it require a for loop? It will not require a tr the, the, the loop, um, no. but that's a teaching moment there. So if you wanted to go in right. and right. review a student response and you see, wow, there's like 20 lines of code when there should only be four, they should have used a while true loop. You can see that there and then maybe that's a conversation you have with that student. And there is gamification built into this, right, in terms of number of hints you're using, you get some kind of uh, points for that. If you use hints, you lose points, right? Something like that? Uh, no, there's, there's no points involved. Okay. Okay. So you keep getting hints till, till the end of this. Uh, I mean, you can get almost the whole solution through hints. No, 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 no. It's oh, the hints are just giving you the tools you need to complete the level. So, so um, giving you more understanding of the concepts that will be applied in the level, it will not give you the actual solution or even close to that. Okay. Um, so in the teacher dashboard, in addition to reviewing the solutions that the students wrote, you can get an idea of where the student is uh, in completing that particular course. You can hover over any of the levels to see how long it took them to complete that level and when they completed it. Uh, you can also see here that whether or not a student was enrolled in a practice level. So like I said, some students will be given practice levels if they're, they need more help on that concept. So here, this student was given a practice level because that level turned green and it has an A or a B next to it. And then once they finish their, uh, their course, they will get a certificate. Um, so you can always share that with students as well. Okay. And it's really easy to enroll students. Um, simply, once you create a class, you just get a class code, and you can share that with your students. They can self-register uh, either just on their own with or without an email address or through Google Classroom or through, uh, you can use Clever as well. So those are some single sign-on options. And then um, just so you know, we do, um, uh, we do have an APCSP course, so we mapped to that. We've been endorsed um, by the College Board for that, and so we have a, a comprehensive APCSP um, course uh, um, through Code Combat. Um, any, uh, any questions? That's essentially Code Combat. Um, basically, you know, Code Combat um, is a game the idea is that students are engaged in it, they're used to playing games, they're used to making mistakes when they play games, so they're less frustrated when they do make a mistake in code combat because they're familiar with that environment and it's more acceptable to kind of make a mistake and they are comfortable trying again, which is great. Kind of helps them build grit, which is uh, amazing. Students also in the classroom will tend to collaborate with each other to ask them, hey, what did you get on that one? How did you work through that? Which is really nice to see um, also. And then we have projects in here, so they got a chance to be creative and use the code that they um, learn, the concepts that they learned, apply them. And uh, what's also great for the teachers is that we provide lesson plans and everything that you need to teach uh, computer science in here. Um, so yeah, that's basically Code Combat. Um, what are what are your thoughts? You have any additional questions? Anything I can help with? Are all the components free? So no. Um, so the first unit is free. If I go back to the course guides here, and then anything beyond that requires a subscription. Um, I can show you the pricing. Just give me a second here. Oh, actually, one quick thing that I did want to mention. So how are, using, how are uh, educators using Code Combat in the classroom? Lots of different ways. It fits into all types of classes. So we have anything from computer science, APCSP, to library time, to enrichment, gifted and talented, and even incorporated during the day into science and math classes. So there's plenty of opportunities to, to be using Code Combat or try coding out in the classroom. Um, in lots of different um, ways. What platforms okay, so. do you work on? <clears throat> the platform. um, so we, 
we we offer single sign. Well, you, are you talking about um, like hardware? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, uh, it's great on PCs and Chromebooks. We don't recommend it with iPads. It's not a good environment. We don't support iPads. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just browser based. You don't need to download anything. Okay, so um, here's the pricing. It's essentially $50 a student, and then it goes down from there the more students that you have, and that's for an annual license. We have um, opportunities for discounts for, for bulk purchases as well as multi-years. We offer professional development as well, so that's uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one scheduled at your convenience with our customer success person walking you through the ins and outs of code combat and um, um, how best to use it in your classroom to fit the needs of your classroom. And you can see here we have something listed as Ozaria. So that's actually our newest game. It's more story based. It's very beautiful. The cinematics are amazing. Um, and it incorporates lessons within the story itself. So the characters are delivering the lessons um, and teaching the students within the game and also kind of in uh, reinforcing the the key terms um, so it's also teaching JavaScript and Python definitely recommend trying uh, Ozaria out as well um, so those are that's kind of the pricing I can always share with this with you at a later date um, but besides pricing do you have any other questions or thoughts do you guys offer pilots uh, so yeah, so we we can offer um, pilots for sure. Um, it's kind of a case by case basis, but that would be something to um, speak to an account executive uh, or territory manager with um, someone who would handle your particular district. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pilots are a great opportunity for um, schools and districts to kind of try it out without making a very big commitment um, monetary wise and you know a lot of times if it's you know so it's January right it's halfway through the school year it's pretty good time to be piloting um, so definitely that's something that you know we can we can talk about how does your AP computer principles uh, portion work same way with the, the gameplay or is it different yeah, so it is, it's basically, um, let me log in here so you can see it. So it's using the courses within Code Combat. And then in addition to that, uh, let me just, actually, uh, we, we uh, kind of meet all the big ideas as well. So there's a whole schedule for, for using code combat to teach ABCSB. Let me Oh here it is. Okay. So we have um, a curriculum. Here's the course schedule here. So it go, breaks it down week by week what you should be doing and what each of them um, are related to. I know this year we're doing the um, explore and create performance tasks, I don't think it's gonna look the same next year. I think APCSP will be different. <clears throat> uh, but this is just showing you how within each of the, the levels and courses within Code Combat, how you're um, kind of having the students practice those explore and create tasks. Uh, the thing about Code Combat's curriculum, it's, it's more coding heavy, um, but we do address the big ideas, of course. We found that, you know, in order to best prepare students for the create task, it's good to have them um, really practice a lot, um, actually coding and typing the code, so that when they get to that, they um, are able to kind of apply that and be creative and, and create a really awesome project. Anything, any other questions? Okay. Um, well, if not, uh, I think Michelle, I'd love for you to share my information. I'd love to also be able to um, send out um, some resources on Code Combat as well as Ozaria. 
And um, yeah, if, if, if you could do that, that would be great. We can connect if you have any uh, further questions or if you want to chat about pricing or piloting or anything like that, happy to help. Um, but otherwise, I won't take up any more of your time. I know it's late in the, the evening for you. Um, so, so yeah. If you, um, if you want to send just a couple of slides that we can pop into the presentation, if there's anything like that, that's probably um, the best idea because we keep those on our website and people reference them and, and go okay. into, you know, just a slide or two and um, um, you, you can add, we'll insert as many as you need, but, um, okay. you know, just to, just for our viewers at home. And, oh, so do you mean within uh, the Zoom right now? Uh, no, I mean you can send oh, okay. them to me. You can send them to me, um, you know, at a later date, and I'll just pop them in this week's. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we yeah, do, that sounds we great. We record this, um, which is you know, so that people can see what you showed. But if there's anything ongoing, just a couple little, um, you know, just a, a quick, brief uh, thing that I can pop into the slideshow, that that'd be fine. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it, and I hope that you have a, a great evening. Thank you so much. There was, um, be, before you go, there mm -hmm. was a, um, another chapter, and I'll send you information uh, from them. They would uh, like you to present their chapter as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, sounds good. Right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have All a good right. night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So I actually um, couldn't wait to, to wrap up because I actually use this in Colorado. So if you have questions, you can fire away. Um, got this was kind of what we went to. One year we did the free thing, and then the other year we actually enrolled. So if you wanted to ask me questions about how it looks in the middle school class, I can tell you because um, we we did. So, but I didn't want to say that much. Well, so in general, you have a thumbs up. So here, so I actually have some thoughts because um, I was like bringing back all these memories of what happened. So it's definitely better when the students are paired. It doesn't solve the problem of this kid's done in three minutes and this kid takes three weeks. And it's just so you kind of have to be cognizant of who's sitting where. Um, right. But it doesn't solve that problem. It solves the problem that they can go to the end of the chapter, so to speak, but they can't go beyond that, but still you'll have a kid who in three days has smashed right. the well, entire thing. Right, well that's the same thing, thing in general, they can go to the end of the chapter, but they can't unlock the next chapter, but I literally had the kid go home. We were on like lesson 10, and he went home over like a long break, yeah. and now he logged into the school account from his home computer and finished his whole video game, <laughs> Yeah. which is lesson 22, to the lesson possible like lesson 12. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do with this kid? <laughs> And like it was like that fast. Like he went home on lesson 12, we went on break and he came home on lesson 22. <laughs> so we have um, one of my teachers who is not here tonight. She's doing coding and I find like I'll stop in her classroom and there are kids on different things. So we've seen CS first in a previous meeting. So for those kids that are advanced, you usually have another programming activity or option for them. Right, so they go on to something with something totally different, and they're so. I have this guy on now. Yes, he yes. has designed in Photoshop. Yes, zero. Yes, zero. zero. What was that other one? This one show it. Something zero. The front of the Yeah, yeah. Yes. That one. Yes. So, uh, I have so. a certain point. Are you? Yeah. So she likes that. Her but advanced the, students, they go, they race through. So they're yeah. on there, and that's kind of done, and that's. Yeah, it's great. That's why I was surprised. Well, what advantage? I mean, this this goes down to a much lower grade level. Yeah. Uh, that that really is starting off at pretty. You know, right. Well, the zero stuff. Like, well, it's zero middle school. Yeah, that will work. Got to make it an CSC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but one thing about Fort Combat is it's a very multimedia rich immersive experience. Yeah. So the kids like to use it. The kids did like it. I did notice it's that there was like a burn rate of two weeks though. Like um, they, they were into it, but it seemed like after two weeks they were just yeah. like, oh. and this is middle school, must be yeah. six for me. Um, and they were just like, after two weeks, they were just like, oh, my brain's dry. You know, they couldn't, um, it seemed like they were done after two weeks. And so we went back to like some other block. Were they more losing interest or got too far? 
it advanced to the point where it was difficult. And that's the other thing I was going to say. It doesn't really allow you to, to at, at least at the beginner levels, like you're using functions, you're seeing like hero.move, write, and all that. But you don't really know why that works. You're just in more logic based in syntax land. So the way that we um, sequenced this was we did scratch. We taught them logic and block. And then we even did code.org. Uh, actually, we started with code.org because that kind of like guided them through processing logic. And then we went to scratch kind of like an open um, pad of block coding. And then we went to this to say, hey, all that logic stuff that you learn, like the sequencing principles apply in syntax land too. Um, and it was it was great for that. It was great for introducing kids to syntax and utilizing, like even they had like conditional statements and wild things and syntax uh, based programming, but kids didn't really know why hero.move right works. And, uh, okay. Object method and yeah, like, um, but I would say it was good for two weeks. Um, that's, you know, you said, is it a thumbs up or thumbs down? I'd say it's good for two weeks, thumbs up. Um, but I would not base your entire year on it because there's a burn rate. That would be that. Yeah. Like, you need something else. Oh, yeah. I mean, sort of kids. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Use it for is, um, if you were to, to purchase it, I would say maybe plan on everybody doing it for two weeks, but that's that thing that you can send kids to that are your advanced kids who are just kind of smash through anything you give them and say, hey, good combat, and they were kind of into it. Um, so I don't know. Um, so Deepa brought up a good point when the presenter was on, and this has always been my my block with these um, only prescribed programs. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the package, you give it to them. And even, you know, we like the idea that kids can go at their own pace, but I think that's critical the lesson that you're giving them. So even if they're at on different pages, I think at some point we have to teach the concept. So yeah. And, yeah, and I do like that. Thank I, you. I, yeah, sure. I don't <laughs> yeah. subscribe to that. Like and they do get I, I remember I taught at an um, alternative school in addition to in the evenings for years, for ten years. And they went to um, a model where we were doing all the courses online. So now you have kids, first of all, that are at risk. <laughs> And have a right. problem sitting still. Now we're saying, go in front of the computer and you just yeah. got to teach all and your And discipline lessons. yourself. And now I'm like yeah. the moderator. Like, okay, yeah. not working, you know. And they couldn't, I still had to go back and adjust that. Like, we do it sometimes, but I'm still going to do lessons where we interact and talk right. and because that's how they learn. Right. right. And I, yeah, and I, and, you know, we're deal with them. Right. Okay, so why are we doing this? So I'll right. have someone demonstrate. I will. So even if you're still on the 10 and we're now learning about the 13 and right. 5, you're still learning right. about that. When you come to it, it will be familiar. Right. So, so yeah, I still have to. So, so to answer yeah. your point, you know, an environment like Carol. Carol is also the Carol, the yeah. dog. Where the dog goes through the mazes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, as you said, instead of uh, court come back, the computer directing you. You know, you would like in the classroom, okay, guys, stand up, you want to go there. How many steps will you walk? Mm -hmm. And the wall comes. Those you kind of practically that. try it in the classroom, and, yeah, and interact, you know, yeah, and yeah. then write the code together, right. you know, right. and then put that code in a function, yeah. you know, all the loops. All the story so, recording, that's still very important. Yeah. Because that's how yeah, here it is. Uh, start, right. do this yeah. for a career. They sit down and like, kind of sketch it out. The kids do not want to do the paper pencil. Yeah. They do not want to do the paper pencil. They just, they just yeah. <laughs> But I do that where I'll have them tell me, I'll say to them, okay, you tell me, what am I doing? Do you want the guy to get, you know, go here and get to the pig or whatever? Tell me what to do. And I'll demonstrate what they're saying. I'll say, okay, go forward. And I'll say, one step forward. They'll say, okay, turn right. And like, and they won't say go forward again. And I'll say that. Why did you get to the pig? Why did you tell me to go forward again? And they, that does really help them in the concept. But. There was uh, something on Khan where if you if you wanted to have something similar to this, that's it's not as good and it's, it's harder to grade. Like that was the other thing too. It, it was completion grading. You could see if they got a green dot, they were done. Um, and if it was yellow, something was incomplete. And then you could click on that kid to see who had what or that lesson to see who did what. But uh, Khan Academy, I forget what it what it what the course name is. I think it's like CS1. Yeah, I just created an account. Yeah, it'll guide you through some JavaScript stuff, and in that, you're not doing, you're not solving like mazes. You're um, creating shapes and like drawing and having some animation stuff, and it's the same type of logic. It's like 
Um, they're going to give you a function that will build a rectangle for you with parameters and everything, and then you sequence it properly, you'll get the result. So it's essentially the same idea. I would say code comments definitely more automated, where like it's kind of just here's what we're doing, and like you said, today is going to be conditional. This is what they look like. They look like this code, and then the whole lesson is based on conditionals or whatever variables, whatever it is for the day. Um, but yeah, I was like, when this was on, I was bringing back all those memories of how it went. I, I really think after two weeks, the kids were just kind of, unless they're there to learn code-based or syntax-based coding, I'm not sure you'll get more than two weeks out of them before they're kind of feeling burnt. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't catch what the yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, That's what I was like, it's not. I know it's been a whole year, but like you said, like, yeah. And most, like, I happen to yeah. see my kids a lot, and you're going to see your kids a lot, but like most most middle school computer teachers are seeing their kids 30 to 40 times a year. You're not going to use it every single time. Right. right. So you just pay $50 per student. That's it. So I think that was our experience. We, we tried it, and that was kind of, we tried the free, and free was like a three day thing. So if you want to see what it's like, you can get like two, three class days out of it. It's probably two class days. But again, three for the kids who just kind of aren't, aren't really getting it. Um, so if you did want to experience it, we did that the first year. And then the uh, second year, we, we went to Payne. And then my supervisor and I kind of sat down and just said, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, during the summer before the students come to class, you could send it as a link to them during your summer time if you yeah. are free. You play with the Give it a try, you know. Yeah. They'll get a feel of yeah. what they're going to learn in school. You know? Have you looked at the code.org curriculum curriculum? Um, I have a lot of middle school experience. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I missed the, I went to the main stop in main campus and I looked at the uh, email like, I'm in the wrong spot. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, so sorry. No, it's, I, it was just me. Running, 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 running. I was running at late and then I looked at the email like I should have read that. Um, okay. But um, I didn't, did, are you middle school, high school? I'm middle school, I teach at Hamilton Township. Okay, so I can kind of, I, we had semesters, and I could give you an entire semester, like middle school CS, if you need that. Yeah, no, I, well, because you were talking about the green and stuff in Code Combat. Yeah. Code.org does that, too. Yeah, so that's like, I can sort of the one that yeah. is. Okay. That's yeah, good, yeah. yeah. That seems to be a, a common. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I can just, link it to my Google Classroom and things, so that I can see any of the kids. Yeah. Code.org was great. That's what we used we use primarily. And then a lot of it's free. I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's all, free. It's free, yeah. yeah it's it's pretty hard to, it's it's pretty solid. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's just that, it's just Especially a lot of stuff. Right. Level, it's, it's, yeah. I, I did a, a, an unplugged programming workshop for teachers, and I kept trying not to use Code.org <laughs> because I figured most people knew about it. Actually, I was surprised how many people didn't. And but I kept going to it because all of the stuff they provided yeah. just was good. Yeah. 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 And like you said, <laughs> well, the concept, yeah, conditionals or the logic statements or like everything. Yeah, the whole multimedia and the professional people from Bill Gates, everybody talking about. Yeah. You know, and I would actually say too, um, as far as sequencing goes, HTML and CSS on code.org would be a good place to start for syntax based because then the kids see, oh, if I forget semicolon or any kind of punctuation, the thing breaks. And you kind of almost have to introduce that separately then, okay, now take that and combine it with logic and get yeah. it all. So that was kind of like, after we did HTML and CSS on code.org, we, then we kind of started pushing into the code combat. And it, like I said, it was like, I don't know, for us it seemed like two weeks and then the burn rate was like, okay, we're done with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did the HTML unit with them in the fall and then now they're yeah. Did you say you were high school now? Or I'm high school now. Yeah, I did three years at um, Colorado Middle School. So. Okay. so when you talk about the burn rate, are you experiencing that same situation with the other programs as well? Um, I think code.org lasted longer because I'm not sure exactly why. I think the kids were just burnt on the syntax and not understanding why. You know, like hero.move, right? Well, why does that work? Like, it's just magic that it works. You know, they don't see that there's a function that's right. changing the x and y because, you know, like, they don't see the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so I think they were getting a little frustrated with that. And then they, the complexity was there, too. And this was like, uh, the most experience I had was sixth grade with that, and then seventh and eighth, 
obviously seem to be able to handle a little more of it a little further down the road. Um, but the experience that, that we had, that I should say that I had, because we I was kind of the only one there, um, was that after about two weeks, they just were very confused. Or they were the kid that wants to just hammer through. And so in that case, maybe we uh, the consideration of getting maybe 10 licenses and then this kid's better right. doing it over the yeah. weekend. You can say, that's hey, try this, you know, and then that's the go-to. if Because I know how, you know, it, it feels to me like sometimes it's like, oh, you've done again? Like, man, I'm not, yes. I don't yeah. have anything. Right. I'm, I'm not struggling. Really. Well, so I, that's why I just created the Khan Academy account. I put that kid on the app design. Yeah. code.org when yeah. he finished. I was like, I'm going to release the exercise. <laughs> that's, that, that's right. You know, many kids that finish it off and what, what do we give them next? Yeah. So, you know, they're doing some other homework for the next class. Right. Yeah, but I want to keep him engaged. Yeah. I don't want to lose that interest. Yeah. So he, he's doing the app designer and when I found a couple more things, I went back and checked in with him. He's like, no, I'm, I'm still doing this and I'm good with this. So I was like, yeah. okay, keep doing that for now. So the last five years, Nobody's really mentioned Khan Academy. So I haven't really used it yet. I just because code.org is I mean, pretty much. I don't know that it exists, but I've never heard it mentioned in this particular yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. So, so has, does anybody have any experience with that? He said, I, I think he was the boss of Jason's business. I just it's created, like, on Friday, the NPR account, and I think it's in my Google Classroom. Classroom. So all the kids are listed there, but I didn't link into their Google Classroom yet because the kids said it's still okay. So I was like, I'm just going to do it now. I have to get ready. And I picked a course. They had a whole bunch of courses if you go to it. And I just picked. I, I just have never heard anybody mention it before. In terms of computer science. Interesting. What was that? That's I think it's it was okay. okay. I mean, we got two weeks out of that as well. It seemed like, it seemed like two weeks is the magic. Though. It seemed like that was kind of the, the shifting attention span. Yeah, they do. Their attention span is hard, but like if they want to learn the more in depth stuff, it takes more than two weeks. Like you want to learn how to make well, a video game, we're going to work on it. Yeah, and I think that's the thing too is you know they sit down and they're like, all right, let's make some video games. You know, it's like uh, it's like learning how to play guitar. You know, right. you're not going to rip a solo on day one. Right. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. If they haven't had a lot of experience with project-based learning or anything like that, they are used to like, oh, you know, we, we cover a unit in a week and then we're done with that unit yeah. and we move on. So I feel like it, it really is a sea change in how they perceive their education to look like. And, I, and, and actually, too, it could be my teaching style, too. Like maybe I feel like two weeks is like a block I'm comfortable with, like for progression, you know, so we might, like for my units, I guess, like two weeks for me. I don't know, maybe. You or it's the kids. Day. What's that now? Yeah, yeah, the same students every day. Or um, then I did for semesters. Now I'm teaching a different situation now, but yeah, I mean back. Yeah, yeah. so that was semesters every day. Yeah, 40, 40, 45, 45 day. Yeah. yeah, forty-five day. Money. Right. So it was an elective. Yeah. Yeah. Ours is an elective too, but the eighth graders choose only one elective. So they have them for the whole year, except the 30 days that they get pulled out to go to Spanish. Otherwise, they work that way. Oh, so that kind of thing is Yeah. There's a whole bunch. There's choir, um, instrumental bands, two yeah, different kinds of art, STEM, all financial literacy, all of the related arts. And they pick, most of the eighth graders pick one for the whole year, except 30 days. Spanish. But, I, well, so they were talking about it for next year, saying that they, if we just had a meeting today, actually, our department meeting, in which we were saying we don't know what's happening for next year. Because, um, right. And so they were saying we didn't know what the plan was to insert through that, or the financial literacy teacher. So, we all see all the sixth graders and a lot of the seventh graders, but not. And we don't see all the seventh graders either. Some of the seventh graders pick the full year elective. Computer science is not offered as a full year elective to some graders, I'm grateful for because just the in depth of two full being able to teach them then if they took a seven and eight, how in depth that would get would be really challenging at that brain value, you know. Yeah, there was a significant difference between yeah. seventh and eighth, and even more so between seventh and sixth. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
the yeah. one program which a lot of teachers are talking about is the coder z virtual robotics environment where the same ev3 yeah. instead of the physical yeah, robot the coder z uh, i mean it's a it's drag like and drop that. kind of environment you connect the motor and do whatever task you have to do and there is yeah. competition yeah. for that yeah. and i think uh, there's a free one and there is what they call freemium from free to pay you know so coder z is something uh, if you want to look at robotics which is the in thing nowadays everybody is talking about it and it's coder z yeah now the point is um, there are so many programming languages right so if the students ask the teachers ask which programming language should we learn what is the most popular one or which is the one which will give you the good career prospects so any guesses what it could be my uh, answer for that would always be by the time we're in the workforce these languages won't exist yeah. <laughs> all right what about today so you might as well just learn the concept because the concept will yeah. be the same so there is one video which daryl and passed on you going to share the screen yes let's so i need to click somewhere yes one more let's let's yeah Ooh. Mm-hmm. we're going to like Any type of database querying, you know, 
There you go. switches when yeah, it oh, takes, yeah. when it changes yeah. place. Oh, okay. I was wondering. I just, thought I was losing yeah. that. <laughs> I was losing AI. Yeah, that's what Michelle does. No, she's not. What do I do? <laughs> Sometimes she registers me. Sometimes I'll be sitting at home having a glass of wine and I get a I get a confirmation for a registration. Thank you for registering. Yeah. Michelle Oh, you know. I do have everybody's email address here, so it would most likely be. Okay, well, 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 most, most, most likely to find people off this but they don't know about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that was interesting, yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. So, we already met Jason from Mainland Regional High School. Yeah, Jason. Mr. Jeff from EHT. Swift. Yeah, it's been a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing everybody knew should do is Register for free CSTA membership. You get a lot of freebies, mm -hmm. a lot of important they announcements. Well, they do ask. Um, they do ask that each year yeah, people go and up. reaffirm. Yeah, yeah. Um, email about that. So, so yeah. If uh, you know, I'll, I'll be sending out a reminder to everyone. Okay. But uh, we we definitely you know we did make the case in our chapter leadership meeting that we don't want our members to have to go on every single year and affirm like we want control to say whether or not someone has been in chapter meetings like we don't want people to have to keep signing up to you we've got a member number it should last us our lifetime if our chapter leader says we've not been in members then fine we would re-enroll if we got re-involved but um so hopefully they take that to heart yeah because you know I just feel like it's a team for me to Yeah, I yeah. I want to do that. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of came and I saw the email. But, but yeah, that, that, so mm -hmm. that's the link. And you know, we will all get a copy of this presentation. So okay. you can go there and do that. Mm -hmm. So this is our current official team. Mm -hmm. Oh, we yeah. have. President is Adam Swift. He had some prior appointment so he could not make it. Generally he is the quarterback yeah. tonight. <laughs> so I am the backup quarterback over there. Why? And oh, I say it or is somebody going to say? <laughs> no, no, let's just let it go. We, we just got to right. let it go. Michelle right. is. That's not good. I'm going to make a book over. We got a whole Eagles okay. thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is well, bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're all just feeling really bad. So, yeah. so Michelle is the secretary and Karen is the treasurer. Mm -hmm. We do have a 
do you have nothing to treasure at the moment? Yeah. Okay. So there is CHTA plus also there, which gives you some additional benefits. Costs fifty dollars a year, right? And what are those benefits? They 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 do have a lot of sales um, for CHTA plus members on different programs and hardware. Yeah, the dis discounted teaching aids like robotic kits and you know maker tools, those kind of stuff. But they do sink a lot of the money right back into the chapters in terms of chapter grants and things like that. Okay. Since we've been re the recipients of chapter grants, I I feel like I personally can definitely see the value in it. Um, in order to be an officer in a chapter, you have to be a CSTA plus member. I believe that's going to be. Something that they're going to roll out this year that's something okay. that they're considering. Um, and this year, I know for the conference, you have to at least have a basic membership, of the free one. So you can't even register for the conference without the basic membership. So um, if anybody is planning on coming to the conference, we'll, we'll keep you on that. So these are the links to our uh, online presence. Can we take a moment and actually look at those? Because I don't feel like I feel like we just show these links and we don't actually show the thanks. Go ahead. So um, just in case people have never clicked on the links. Um, let me pull this down. This is the Google group that we keep referencing over here. Um, <coughs> CSTA, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, CSTA New Jersey, this is our Google group. And I know most of you, you, you just see the messages come through the email, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Do you get these? Do you, you see these kinds of things? Yes. Um, but if you go to groups.google.com, you'll see it in there. Um, if you're not a part of this group, I can add you as a member. And you can see that all these topics are there, and you can go in and, and post your own topic and we encourage you to do so. It shouldn't just be like chapter leaders that are posting. This is for everyone. Um, so please, it's your group and it's all the educators in New Jersey and some outside of New Jersey that um, are part of the CSTA. So lots of good stuff in there. And we do have our website as well. This is our website. And um, there's a link to our high school programming competition that's coming up soon, April. Um, I do have a couple of spots left for schools. I wanted to touch base with you on that. Uh, it's um, a Java-based programming competition. Yeah, I've got a couple kids that could probably do that okay. today. Okay. Um, okay, so you have to enroll first, so when you click on that, it'll take you to the website for that. Um, and you can see that there's like a sample problem here. For you first, you go here and you do the teacher registration. It's just a simple Google form. Okay. Okay. Um, once you get confirmation from me, uh, you will have your students go on and do the student registration right there. Okay. Is this Couple something of quick that I questions. Want to present to the class, like, hey guys, do you want to be in the competition, or is this more like teachers kind of just different that? schools? Different schools do it differently. Some schools actually have to have code off to decide who they're going to bring, okay. because you can only bring 15 students. So if the entire class wants to come. Um, sometimes you have to do a little code off, you know, in order to, to see who's going to actually represent you. Because it is a competition yeah. with a trophy and, you know, we want, we want students to be all in on it. But I wouldn't say, like, if you didn't, if you had a class that was 15 students and you could bring the entire class, bring them. Because at least the ones who are maybe not in competition mode would be galvanized right. by, their, yeah. by their classmates. And, and want to do better for next year or something like that. So we've actually seen students come in as freshmen and, you know, you know, kind of move up the food chain, you know, at, in each successive year. So um, it doesn't just have to be the ones that want to compete. You know, it could be it could be somebody that you might want to encourage. So until they see it, um, they don't know. But it is uh, Java based, so you want to make sure that you. Um, Limit it to the 15 students and look at the sample problems. Um, you can see that our winning teams from last year. Okay, we would like we would like some 
different schools to win, you know, so increase the field, increase the wins. These are the participating schools so far. We also have um, Tom's River South that just filled out theirs uh, last night. And they're from like all over New Jersey. The one form that you will have to send me for each student is this one. This uh, waiver covers everything. In previous years, it's been like three forms, and this year it's just one. So um, you will go here. You will uh, register your team here. You'll get an email from me, and then your students will register on this form, and then I will hit you up for those waivers. And I'll, I send emails basically on Friday saying, hey, this is what I need. Um, so and it appears that there's no fees or anything. It's just there is no fees, um, but we do ask that everybody pack a lunch this year because wow. our major costs were in the food. We're talking, you know, over like three thousand dollars in yeah, food. I saw the line. <laughs> so in order for us to like be able to host the competition, we we had to figure out like what what are we going to do yeah. here. So we did ask the schools to um, affirm that they would be bringing a lunch for their students. And I, I realize that um, it's not optimal. It's definitely suboptimal, but our costs have had yeah. to be cut yeah. across the board. So yeah. as as a as an organization, um, we have nothing to trash. Right. Right. Because because we they don't yet have a nonprofit status and DSTA has asked us to wait until um, they go through the uh, <clears throat> sorry go through the process um, with the IRS, uh, the appeals process, we're on our second appeal to have CSTA be able to be our umbrella organization for nonprofit status. So after that, we'd be able to raise money and, you know, be able to host something where we could include food. But because it's here, the catering costs are really high. So it's a great competition now. You're in, you're out. Most schools are on their way by like 1 o'clock to get the buses back. So it's, it's really good. Some of the other links that we talked about, again, the website. Um, and you can see on our website that we do have presentations and recordings. I just want to show you this. Um, that go back. Yeah. Like tonight, here's the presentation. Tomorrow, there'll be a video there. So we do have a video from each uh, chapter meeting going back, you know, five years, our presentations and our videos. So that if there were presenters that you were interested in seeing, they're on there. And um, it's just, you know, we'll continue to keep that resource up for our members. So we show these links, but there's really, like, good resources on them. So yeah, that's a good reminder, those videos. Yes. So many presenters have come from everywhere. Yeah, we've been really lucky. Can I just um, share? So I looked at the email about the AI thing. Can I just share that real quick? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. So it, it's, a, it's through ISTE. There, it's an artificial intelligence explorations um, in school environments program for free. And that's if you're an ISTE member. Well, maybe somebody has to, because I'm not. I am. Um, our school was, I got an email from our tech coordinator at oh, okay. school asking if I was interested, he just said it to everyone, saying he was trying to put a team together. But the course is free, and as a result of the course, you get um, a free one-year subscription to ISTE upon completion. Wow. So, that's might be worth, if anyone's interested, the course starts on February 10th, and... I'll uh, put it in the, we'll put it in the thing. I've got the email, too. Oh, okay. Um, artificial intelligence, so this was the email I got. Artificial intelligence explorations, free course, and I was looking to put together a team here at DV to take this class online. If you're interested in joining, the class starts on February 10th and runs through April 5th. After completing the course, you would be provided with a free year subscription to ISTE and all of their online resources. And then he says he'll do the registration. We just have to tell him that we want to do it. So I, this is my coordinator at my district. Is that your own page? Online, so I'm guessing to some extent it has to be because like you would work but that's the start and end, so I would be completed all by the ending date, but I don't know how it's being paid. It says it's 15 hour facilitated online, eight, eight, eight hour, 15, eight week, 15 hour facilitated online for courses. Beautiful. So if anyone's interested or like, currently if you want to put together a team in the or whatever, um, 
it's through ISTE, so you can try to find it on the website. I didn't even see all the stuff you had included in the email, because as I said, I just like responded right away, and now we were, we were talking about it. So it's interesting. I saw that email earlier, and uh, is it can it be is it uh, is it asynchronous? Uh, can you do it? I mean, do you have to be there? Do you have to be online at a specific time? I don't because I have I, I know I have workshops during that time. That I can well, I mean, but if it's it's geared to teachers, they know we're teaching classes. It's for using yeah. in a classroom, so it's got to be. Well, my my workshops go well. It's. <laughs> I'll put it in yeah, but I mean, like, I'm just kidding. But, like, they have to know that we, we've got to be able to do it. Yeah. 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 I'm sure yeah. We, we, there's there are details about it. Yeah, I responded before six other people did it. <laughs> there, I put it on the next slide. It's just going to look ugly for a minute. Okay, sure. <laughs> there will be well, I'm so amazed. <laughs> I can heckle. Why do I get heckled? So, this is uh, talking about the, you know, Google Groups. Again, great resource where all CSTA members of New Jersey, you know, a lot of interaction going on, what's happening in your classrooms, you know, tips and tricks, resources. So, Michelle, do you add automatically or we need to request you to add to the Google Groups? To the Google Group, you can just click on the link and, and ask for it and I'll get the request. Gotcha. Um, okay. And I can, um, or I can add you. Okay. So, I think I've already added yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I believe I've already added yeah. you. If you're not a part of it, let me know and uh, I'll get you in it. And there's always good topics and discussions in there. So, PD resources and events. Uh, Michelle, anything specific in this which we use? Which slide are we on? Uh, the oh, the PD computer resources. science pathways. Yeah. yeah. Um, the CSTA job board looks like it's uh, it's kind of, um, when I click on it, I don't know, sometimes it, sometimes there's something there. They were looking for a chapter. Oh, that's, you have to fix that link. Okay. I'll fix that right now. Yeah. Adam, Adam was working on it, <laughs> but they've moved their link around. They've they've been changing their site, so he might he might not have realized it. It was gone. Yeah, but the cyber security is something. Uh, there's a lot of buzz going on about it, yeah. so you can look at. So they do have an open position for a chapter relations manager. Um, and it is, um, I know it's kind of based in Chicago, but it's not. I mean, it, as far as I understand, it's a remote position. You can work remotely. You do have to um, meet with them every so often. And I believe that would be in Chicago. But that is someone that would be in charge of um, working with all the chapters on their goals. And their objectives and also working on the conference and stuff like that so it's we, we just lost leslie scanterberry she was our chapter relations uh, manager and she's a great woman um but she's she's moved on so we've kind of got like some people that are filling the gap for now but the, you know if you're if you know somebody that is looking for a position um that has some clue of what cs is about um that, that is a position that they've got open, so I'll just link to that in this right here for the job board. I'll just change that link so it takes you right to that job. That's the only job I know about that okay. they've got right now. Okay. Yeah, annual conference, July 11 to 15. Michelle, you want to talk about it? Arlington, Virginia, so it's nearby for us. So it is. Really close in Arlington. Yeah. Um, so the registration, I know that that link is down there. Um, but what you do want to be aware of is that you do have to have that um, membership. You do have to have your membership first. It won't let you on when you, when you click on that link unless you, you know, won't let you register. Um, there are some scholarships to attend coming. They're they're normally released sometime in January. 
then there's another group that are released in February or March. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're on the fence about whether or not to attend, you want to wait and see. Um, they kind of award those pretty close to the conference. So in the past, when I registered for the conference, and then I've won a scholarship, they refunded that money. Okay. So um, just as a... When did they know they know that? It depends, because there were eight different scholarships. Otherwise, what is the cost for registration alone? Yeah. It depends, because you can sign up for workshops or not, and so the cost kind of varies depending on what level of engagement you do with the conference. Mm -hmm. um, if you're an officer, you can... Um, apply for the chapter leadership uh, one. So that would be something you should definitely okay. apply for. Sure. Um, there are scholarships for first time attendees, there's Rolls Royce scholarships, there's um, InfoC scholarships, which we come to them. And uh, they really do a, jo a good job of like, trying to get people there. So even if they cover part of the cost, and yeah. it's, it's nice. But you don't know how much typically, like if you're going to yeah, it's like three, yeah, it's about the same as it'd be like $300 something. Okay. Um, the, you know, Virginia, it, it's Arlington, Virginia, so it's right outside of D.C. Um, there's definitely more affordable hotels there. Um, and they do, do good conference prices. You can get good conference prices for their hotels. So it's, it's a great conference, though, so. It's good. And it's close. Yeah, we're talking about cyber security. So yeah. girls, last time also we spoke about this. Mm -hmm. The girls go cyber start competition. Mm, has anybody done that? I think the teachers who did it were here last time. Okay. Yeah. Adam, Adam School, uh, ESG did that, right? Yeah, yeah they, got, they got, they won some prizes too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's cash prizes too here. Yeah. And they got good resources. Girls or boys, everybody can check out the resources, cybersecurity. Maker Space. Uh, Maker Space Mondays. We've got four. We've got four of them. We've got electrical engineering later this month on the twenty seventh. We've got uh, little bits. You guys all got a taste of those at the last one. It's yes. the first Joe and Josh. We we had little bits at the last conference. Were you yeah. here, Jessica, for the last Jessica. one? Yeah. So we've got Makerspace Monday February with little 10th. bits. That's February 10th. Um, February 24th. Um, we've got an open exploration day. And that's pretty much yeah. you come in and play with anything that you want. And um, and then we also have uh, micro bits March 9th, so that would be a day. Just focus on micro. I can tell you a lot. If there's anything you want to share with us uh, that you could go with it, send me something. Show me more people. I'd love to show off people. Yeah. So, but these, we have to go to the SRI. Yes, all right. So if you just click on that. And register for it. Register for those. Materials yet for the stuff. And that's on my list for, for next year. Mm -hmm. Because my teacher is very good. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, not even pencil. So, so, the fun thing, I think that at ISTE uh, two years ago, we built a tiny town with the hummingbird and the little bits. And that was just so much fun. Oh, but it's about the micro bits. The, the micro bits. You I said little them. bits, but I meant micro bits. Oh, so you programmed the hummingbirds with the micro bits, oh. and um, you know, did this whole physical tiny town. It was, it was really That's nice cool. to see, okay. you know, all the components that they were doing the coding and everything. It was great. Yeah, micro bits are really They're great. Really cool. Yeah. And now the micro bits also go into the the new finches. The new finches. Wow. Can be programmed with micro bits. Isn't there a new Sphero item that is coming out that coordinates with the micro bits too? I just thought when I was budgeting for next year. I don't know. I mean, we have the latest Sphero Bolt. Yeah, but there's a new and one. Today is actually the last day. Like, if you want to be a Sphero hero, if you're if you're used to using Sphero and stuff like that, 
uh, the eighth, today's the last day for that application to be a zero view one. Um, and you would find out about all of that new stuff. I'm not going to do it. Like last week, sure. No, I still have a couple hours. So. No, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just check it. Okay. Um, we have some workshops. Yep. Let's talk about Phil's workshop. Phil. Or Phil. Phil. Oh, I thought Jerry was doing something. Uh, physical computing with scratch. Was that you or Gary? That would have to be Gary. Is that Gary? I'll change that. I'm sorry. So these are ones that Phil's got coming up here. So that's Gary. I'm sorry. I think this is not what we have. Okay. That's the only thing he's doing? So far. We have other ones coming up that will be with Gary. We didn't put them on the calendar yet. That's the only one that I had Gary's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we've got things like in the planning stages. But I'm busy. He's a little bit busy. Uh, Phil, how many hours does each workshop? Those are most of them. They're nine to three. Nine to three. Yeah. Okay. With a, with a lunch break. Lunch with Phil. Yeah, lunch with Phil. Nothing, I'm just having a little bit fun with that. Um, this next one. Until we work together. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> next one, um, I was on the Co.org advocacy call today, and just some latest announcements, you know, what they're working on in terms of standards. So this link right there, if you click on that red link, <coughs> Click on the red words, the, the, the standards for CFT. Okay. Yeah, click there, click on that little. So that will take you to the cs.org, or csteachers.org, and um, the vision for the standards. So if you have any questions about the standards, it's all, it's all right there. Um, and they have standards for the pre-service programs, for professional development, and for the CS uh, certification pathways. So they're working on all of that. So if you want to, you know, stay up to date on what's happening there, you can just look at that. Can you take this back to the slideshow? Yes. Oh, so the okay. uh, next slide. Board members want it. So the CSCA is looking for board members. These are the positions at the bottom that they are seeking nominations for, and we have till the end of January to be nominated or self-nominate. I don't know if anybody's interested in that. Have any New Jersey representation? I don't know because everybody always looks at me, so I think <laughs> look I, look, else. I look significantly at other people. Yeah. 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 So this is for CHT and national or yeah. national? Okay. Okay. Yeah. National. It okay. does require um, some in-person um, representation, but they do pay for your travel to get there. I don't know. So I figure I, I would just throw that out there. Um, we don't normally talk about national so much in our meetings. Sure. Would you say two or three meetings? Um, yeah. If I want to, I don't want to fall down the rabbit hole of the yeah. application <laughs> because I'm, I'm on a bunch of boards. So I feel like you know, I'm to be on a board. Yeah. And uh, yeah, oh, could be. See, um, I would, if I could on the application again, yeah. <laughs> really? I feel like if I could on the application again, I'd be like, oh, I can fit that in. <laughs> so I'm definitely not clicking. But I've provided the link to you. What's the button? Oh, there's information out. Oh, I could just self I could nominate it. Okay. Also, some federal updates. <laughs> federal updates. Um, there is, this is um, what's going on. We don't anticipate that in a State of the Union address that CS will be mentioned is so far the people who are talking with that office don't see that on the horizon. But um, there has been favorable report language coming out about 2020 spending in CS. So that is a link in case you're interested in seeing what they're talking about on Capitol Hill. They are talking about using some of the defense budget. You'll see that JROTC program. They receive funds, so they're going to use part of the defense budget, budget um, to further uh, CS education, and that is that is nice. Um, and of course, you can see 
that the um, building blocks of STEM Act was finally signed, and the Higher Education Act uh, still has a chance to, to do some spending in the CS area. So just a little advocacy, because we've done some in the past, and just in case you're interested in that, click on the report language, and we've got that. If you have any students that are interested in pursuing computer science, Stockton has some programs. Yeah, so during the competition, students, teachers, and parents will have opportunity to interact and go through the campus mm -hmm. and really know more about what Stockton has to offer in terms of computer science. Yeah, it's been really um, nice to see, you know, when I call IT now and I speak to students, Trevor Cop and all that, yeah. people who have come up through our programming competition and now, you know, they, they're in IT, they're in, they're doing CS, you know, they came to the program. It's just really great to uh, to watch that progression. And he's just one of them that have seen, but we've had, like, a lot of students come through. So, just see that. That's competition. about competition. Mm -hmm. So, you've got a few spots left, right? So, I do. I can, yeah. um, is there a deadline that you there have? There is. Okay. The deadline is going to be when I run out of spots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. because of when we scheduled it, April 8th is normally um, later than we schedule it. Uh, so there's a couple of schools that are on Easter break or spring break. So this date has, we've noticed, it has not been as popular as other dates. So, so some of our, our schools that come every year, they're like, oh, we can't come. Yeah, it's a difficult day for us. So, um, so I do have some spots. Left so the currently, day. the competition is Java based, meaning only those students who have some sort of proficiency with Java should mm -hmm. try to come. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Otherwise, they're going to be really confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's, I don't know, anything else? No. So March 11th. March 11th, mm -hmm. after the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> we could use um, we could use a couple of uh, volunteers for the day of the competition. So um, we generally do some kind of uh, PD for the teacher on that day that uh, bring their students. Um, in the past, some of them have served as judges, but I don't think we have a need for judges this year. Um, we just need like a couple of bodies in the rooms for. Um, Proctoring, like, like last year? Yeah, for proctoring, make sure that we are not using your devices. And checking the code? Well, they don't really check the code. Uh, the only thing you have to do is make sure. Uh, Babysit with proctor. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and they had to do something. There was some, there was some policy for that. Yeah. 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 It was actually pretty easy. Sign up. Yeah. So we could use um, a little assistance. I'll be sending out a call for that very soon. But I believe they give the code, right? Just to check if there's some valid code in there, right? Like if the output needs to be, say, 5, somebody could just put a print LN5, you know, instead of writing the whole thing. So they go through it and... So it's changed over the years. Each oh, okay. year it's been a little bit different. Oh, okay. So the first, you know, the first three years we had um, judges in there who were judging like all the problems that they came through and then saying it back and letting the students know. Um, last year we went to an automated system that was developed by a student and um, there is a way that the teams can communicate with the judges in case they have a question. Um, so that, that might be what you're talking about. Right, right. Um, and I imagine we'll have the same type of scenario this year. Um, so this year again it will be an auto judge judge process if you say anything more about that because you know it's a, it's all under wraps, it's all highly confidential. But uh, it's it's we're looking forward to it. So each year it's gonna be, you know, it'll look a little bit different. Depending on what's available to us. So. But it's still Java. So we start. For now. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah. Or not. You know, I'm getting into it. <laughs> That's the thing, it's not like I, I know it's hard for the teachers. Yeah, yeah. and because it's right before spring break, mm -hmm. the 8th and the 9th is the last day of school for spring break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
I send I send out the call. There's always some people that say, you know, they're willing to help. So that's the I loved doing it last year. Mm -hmm. so, and you you'll bring your students? Yeah, I mean I want to make sure they're interested because I'm just beyond I'm like drowning still, so I, I just don't want to drown more. Um, and <laughs> unless they if they want to go, then mm -hmm. I'm I'm for it. There's a couple, there's like four kids that I'm picturing in my head right now that would be good for it. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that it's not something that I've got to like push okay. them through because I, I can't do that right well, now. Yeah, they do yeah. have some schools that literally bring like one or two teams. So you don't, so, I mean, don't feel like you've got to bring all 15. Like, yeah. 15 yeah. Okay. There's, no work work there's no free work. There's no free Because that's what I was wondering if yeah. I've got to like prep them. Three people per team. Okay, that's right. Oh, okay. Yeah, But that but they're, pair, they're put in groups of three per team, so you want to bring, like, multiples of three. Okay, yeah, because there's, like I said, there's a few kids. Oh, I thought it was three. I mean, I could, I could technically bring that entire AP class. Um, That's who they used to bring from Mainland. Like, yeah. when I proctored last yeah, year, brought, Mainland yeah. brought AP kids. I mean, that, makes, that might be so. I'll, I'll talk to my supervisor. Then we gotta worry about busing and all that. But, yeah, but yeah. Mainland does have a history of bringing kids to that. So yeah. as far as getting board approval and stuff, as long as you do it in time, it is something that they do. So you also have to think yeah. of this yeah. as a resume builder for your students because yeah. they'll be applying to institutions. They have to have something to talk about yeah. on their applications. Yeah. They have to point to some of their extracurriculars, and this is, you know, this is a big thing for some of those students, you know. Not everybody's into athletics, and um, you know, so we consider this to be a challenging programming competition. The, the uh, thing is now that this program has become very popular, this competition, mm -hmm. kids have started preparing for it. So yeah. they Google to other, you know, competitions where there are more uh, solution sets and all those things, and they mm -hmm. practice for it. Yeah. It's not that they just show up; they are actively working on it because as Michelle said it's going to get into your resume it's a good good thing to showcase you know yeah yeah so if they get a uh, little time to prepare it's always good yeah that wraps it thank you that everyone okay thank you yeah. we're done yeah. thank you for quarterback yeah. Thank you for the quarterback. I think you were and he did not, he's still all in that. Look, I had he's still in, in one piece. He was a fold. <laughs> he was a fold. We gotta get you a jersey. We got to get you a jersey. I mean, he, was, he didn't right look like high school coach. Yeah. Well, I don't object to because I'm not an Eagles fan, so it was easy to have. He was all right.